Okay, we're back. Um, last Warden build, and then we've just got three Necromancer builds to go through. All right, let's see what we have here. Uh, running Dama House. Uh oh, she's missing pieces. Okay, so this is definitely uh, one that we can hop into at some point and update because she's missing half her gear. If I recall, I want to say she was originally set up to be a Bobo build. Um, being a warden, she's got the bear on both bars. Yeah, okay, so this was a, originally a Bobo build. Um, I looks like I sacrificed some of the equipment probably for some, some other build. Though so there's not much to do here. Um, To be honest, I've wanted to do Bobo builds for a while. I've run them a couple times. I found them really, really difficult to in execution, in actual application, because as someone who runs uh, solo a lot, in dungeons you inevitably, inevitably get pulled into the combat. It's very difficult to truly be range when it comes to the dungeons. Oh, look at this. Witnessing murder. In the middle of the video. <laughs> What's up, vampire? Aw. Um, difficult, basically, a Bobo build is difficult in real application just because... Ideally, the idea is you want to maintain range, not only because some of the skills benefit in terms of damage or buffs from the range, from staying at range, but because that's kind of the whole idea of the bow build, is you have the bear, in this case, tanking for you and trying to draw the mobs off of you so that you can hang back and, and do maximum damage. But when it came to actual application, both for solo, when I'm solo, the bear doesn't do a good enough job of tanking. Um, and so inevitably, either the, the boss or the mobs will come attack me anyway, which defeats the whole purpose of trying to have that range attack. Um, and even with a companion, because I figured companions might boost this up a bit, I didn't have as good a luck um, running a companion as a tank and saying, okay, you go tank, because it just doesn't do a good enough job to keep the mobs or the boss off of you. So, just personal preference, um, my own experience running Bobo builds, as, as much as I wanted it to work, it just didn't seem to work very well. So inevitably I get pulled into the, the combat directly and then I'm sitting there with a bow, which just feels stupid because I'm two feet away from the enemy trying to pull back a snipe. It just <laughs> seems kind of... Kind of dumb. But who knows, maybe one of these days I'll actually get a, a build put together in the combination of companions or something will allow it to to function. So she's eligible, obviously, for some sort of a build. 
Um, I, t- I, I do really like Wood Elf with Warden. Um, it's probably one of the best sustain combinations. I'm sure it's overkill for some people, but in some ways it's nice every once in a while having more than you need so you know you never have to worry about running out. And that's one thing that, um, in my experience, Warden with, in combined with um, Wood Elf seems to bring really solid sustain to the picture. I have a level 36 here. I started leveling this for PvP and I never finished leveling this. Okay. Everybody else is is max. I'm remembering now. I started this one for PvP, so there's not going to be anything there worth until I get him leveled. Um, so this is a mag crow. The original intent was to log in and actually get uh, for the account-wide achievements. That's what I had originally planned to do, but turns out that takes three plus hours. Narayanith, solid set for Magicka nowadays. New Moon, overwhelming. Okay, so this is again Not the most original, I guess, because I'm running this on uh, Magplar and Magsork. I know I've got, so we've got this same kind of setup on three different ones. Um, I think I was running something else, but when I tested Overwhelming, the actual damage and sustain that it gained, especially for Necro. Necro, when it was first released, I know um, for Stam specifically, I want to say for Mag too, the sustain was pretty rough. And so having any type of sustain set was um, almost mandatory with them. But this is, yeah, this is a nice compliment. And New Moon, oh, New Moon and Overwhelming, and then Narayanith. For a Necro, I mean, again, thematically Narayanith's pretty cool for the Necro side of it. And Maelstrom Ice Staff on the back. Necro, why not? Um, I did that. I'm gonna get upset if I do this. No, okay. So kind of a frost, tying into the frost theme as well, um, because necros do have that, do have that going on. So this is pr this is probably fine. I don't think um, New Moon hasn't been touched in quite some time. Overwhelming hasn't been touched in quite some time. Narayanith actually got buffed um, when they brought the Monster Helms back in general. There was a brief period where Monster Helms were basically useless, um, but they thankfully brought those back. So this is still very solid. And Maelstrom on the back. Yeah, so this is a decent setup. Um... He's a witch. Just a crap ton of titles now. You can tell I like uh I like the outfit station. There we go. Actually showing the creepy helm.
Um, yeah, outfit stations. This is another thing that they did. Been around for years at this point, but great addition to the game. If you're someone that likes the cosmetic um, aspects of the game. Which clearly people do, or they wouldn't be making as much money in the crown store. Microtransactions in games are just it's the norm nowadays. Cosmetics are... Uh, I think cosmetics are a good way to do that. And ESO, considering how long they've been around, um, they've done a um, they've done a decent job. There's been a few, I guess, a few areas where maybe they um, they pushed they pushed the envelope a little bit. But I'd say the the biggest push has been more in the increase in pricing. Um, seem to recall the initial initial Dramothra mounts when they came out were something like 5,000 crowns and people were absolutely up in arms. That's insane. Who's going to spend 5,000 crowns? Now <laughs> you spend 5,000 crowns on a motif. It's yeah, so the prices have overall have increased considerably. The, the amount that people spend on houses and you can spend 17,000 plus crowns just on a home without any furniture it's kind of nutty but for the most part they've they've managed to I think they've managed to stay away from pay to win um, type setup so that's that's a good thing considering how long they've been in the game figuratively speaking so this is my damn crow Yeah. Oh, we're still running powerful assault. Okay, so that probably could use an update. Um, for anyone who hasn't gone into to PvP yet, or someone who's you know, you're kind of new to it, um, I didn't PvP in this game for the first. I would PvP occasionally during like the mid-year mayhem's. Just to go in and kind of fart around. I was never that good at it. Still, I'm not that great at it. Um, but I kind of avoided PvP for the most part. I, I did it at the time in order to get uh, unlock things like Vigor um, or Caltrops within here because they were both good skills to have. Um, at the time, Rapid Maneuvers was at the top, so that you got just by training, so that wasn't hard to get. Um, and now it's essentially useless. But these two skills are both good skills to have um, in both PvE and PvP. And so you would need to go in and PvP long enough to unlock these, was the, the general idea. Um, but that's the only PvP that I did, was essentially mandatory in order to get these unlocked so that I would have access to them for PvE. After... five, six years, somewhere in there. Sometime in the last uh, year or so, maybe year and a half, I decided, well, I've done a lot in the game. Um, still have hard mode achievements, but other than that, not a huge amount of stuff left for me to do in the game that I want to do um, or feel the need to do on 18 plus characters. And so I actually just dove into PvP. One of the things that made a key difference when I was originally getting at with this was when they released this monster helm. Zol, the Ever Wakeful's guys. Um, you get this from going down into Imperial City. There's a, um, I want to say it's in Elven Gardens district, I believe is where he spawns. Um, it's a watcher, basically, that spawns, and when you kill him, you get this helm. It's a guaranteed drop to get the helm. It is a PvP zone, obviously, so... Um, be prepared to get attacked while you're down there by um, other factions, but kill him, you get the helm, and then for 20,000 Telvar, I believe it is, you can go into your base 
talk to the Telvar merchant. Um, one of the merchants down there, I don't remember which one. And they'll sell you the shoulders for 20,000. It is a it is a random as far as what you get for the the weight and the trade of the shoulders. Um, but this set made a humongous difference, a tremendous difference in in my PvP experience um, in a positive way. And the reason being, a lot of the the players that have been doing this for a while, that have been PvPing for a long time, will come in and say, "Oh yeah, Balorg." Balorg is, if you're running Stam, Balorg is the set to run. Um, because they're in it for just maximum damage output and kill as quickly as possible. And for the people that have been doing this a while and they're skilled at PvP and they're, they they have that long-term muscle memory and they can just, you know, the people like Fang Rush or someone who just doesn't even have to think about it, just goes through. They don't necessarily need this, nor would they necessarily run this. Um... Because this is a, it technically is offensive in that it gives you the weapon and spell damage based on enemies hit, but for the most part, this is about survivability. Um, and this is the key, this was key for me in terms of PVPing to give me that extra few seconds to be able to regroup and come back in for more attack. It's, it's it made a huge difference. Um, I don't know if this is still being widely used. I know it was used briefly when it came out. People were trying it out and, and it was popular for a bit. I don't know if it's still being used. But for new players and me still, I love this set. It is my favorite PvP piece of equipment in this game because it gives you just enough breathing room to get out of dodge, to be able to get around an obstacle, um, to be able to heal, whatever it is to regroup so that you're not constantly dying. And that brief amount of seconds becomes key because when you don't die, it allows your, it gives your brain just enough thinking time that you can start working on, okay, what, what skills do I want to use here? What buffs do I want to have up? It gives you enough time to think about what you're doing Instead of just constantly reacting, I'm now I'm dead. Oh, I didn't react, now I'm dead. And then you have to, you know, traipse back across how many miles of Cyrodiil. Um, this is that key difference. If you can, it gives you enough breathing room that you can start learning how to actually PvP instead of just learning how to die over and over. So, highly recommend this. Um, Maybe a little bit of a pain to get because it's you got to go into Imperial City in order to get it um, and get the Telvar, but it's well worth it in my opinion if you're starting out and you're trying to learn the PvP. Um, a great utility. So New Moon, um, a powerful assault looks like the other portion of what I'm running here, and then Wild Hunt. I've got New Moon on the front and then powerful assault on the back. Wild Hunt is another one, um, in my opinion, if you can incorporate it into your build or PvP, it is a fantastic resource to have. Um, this would probably be my second choice after Zol, because the additional speed that you gain from this, both in and out of combat, um, means that you can oftentimes outmaneuver the enemy or avoid being hit by things. Um, Avoid being locked down if they're trying to CC you. Like this can get you out, out of target area, much more quickly than without it. So this is another piece that I would recommend. And there are plenty of things that you can kind of do a split bar build where its front bar is one set, back bar is a second set. In the case of powerful assault, this is easily procced. I'm running both caltrops, um, as well as resolving vigor. So either one of these will proc it. Um, while in combat. But um, I've actually switched I've actually switched at this point um, not on these but the on my other account I've switched over to trying to think it's a craftable set um, 
I don't remember the name of the set now. It's a craftable set. It gives you Daedric Trickery, what it is. It gives you um, one of five random buffs. And I believe it's really easy to proc. It's like by, just by doing damage, if I recall. And it's craftable. So I've switched to that um, on my more current builds running, and I've actually had really good luck with that. And probably more so than Powerful Assault. This is good for you and your team, but um, the other one, just with the buffs, I think in general is probably more useful overall. But this is a decent setup as well. I've had good luck with this. Yeah, uh, PvP. I haven't PvP'd for quite a while. I got her up to captain. Um, and then I kind of stopped. <laughs> but it's fun. The combination um, of Wild Hunt plus Zol adds enough maneuverability and um, survivability that it actually made PvP fun and I was able to survive long enough to participate more and once the longer you can participate the more comfortable you get with your your skills and your reactions to uh, what's going on around you so, actually fun leveled up yeah she's leveled up all right so that rounds out this um, this account uh, I will probably actually I'll hop over give me all the achievements across this one. I'll hop over to uh, my secondary account here and just kind of run through that. I'll try to get it through it more quickly. Back in one second. Okay. Actually, been so long since I logged in over here. They uh, prompted me for a access code. <laughs> I know we already had a um, a free shadow gem in game, but I couldn't help myself. The, uh, the personality that they they gave this particular polymorph was. Pretty entertaining. Um, so let's just start here. 
So the previous account um, was my only master crafter. Um, so for, the bulk of the crafting is done over there for the purposes of transmutation. Uh, I've started picking up some trait research over on this account as well. This is the actual character right here that knows those pieces, but it's pretty much I've learned what I needed to know in order to transmute pieces. So kind of optimal traits, divines on this, infused on this, um, that kind of thing. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So I yeah, I'd forgotten about this one. So in an effort to PvP as a healer, um I actually put this together as kind of a, a healer support build, so running Zol, similar to my other PvP build. This also works quite well, especially as a healer, because again, it's it's more defensively focused. Um, and in this particular case, I wanted uh, I wanted the ability to I was looking for major evasion. in the build somehow. Um, I looked at a couple different sets or skills that would kind of give me major evasion and ultimately what I came back with was medium armor with five pieces of medium armor that I could basically run elude which would give me the major evasion um, plus in this case it gives me a brief amount of major expedition um, it's a skill versus something that comes by default as a as a bonus with an armor set or something like that but it also allows me to wear medium armor which of course is going to uh, boost the stam recovery stam cost reduction that kind of thing which over when you're trying to move in pvp is a very useful thing so um but given that this was a supposed to be a highly defensive setup to where i could basically stand my ground and my teammates I went with craftable armor master in medium armor in order to gain the additional uh, resistances um, and armor master gives you uh, let's see we have an armor ability is slotted your max health is increased by five percent and when you use the ability while in combat your physical and spell resistance is almost six thousand uh, buffed by six thousand for ten seconds so this was a nice even though it's medium armor, the armor master portion of it gives you some additional health plus additional resistances. Um, <clears throat> I'm wearing Wild Hunt with with her as well. Again, that extra mobility for me I found is a really key element to avoiding hits, um, to getting out of areas, problem areas, more quickly. So. This in general is just a, it's a nice thing to have. And given that Armor Master only needs to be on one bar um, in order to proc it because it's a 10 second buff, this actually works quite well. So I've got Sword and Board on the back with Armor Master that I can activate. It's just another one that they switched to in combat. Um, so I can't actually show you the buff working here, but um, yeah, essentially once you're in combat, back bar, hit shuffle, and you gain gain the um, additional resist resistances. Um, and then the front bar is, is essentially healing. So I'm running a resto staff, powered resto staff on the front for maximum healing. Um, I went with transmutation mostly because I had pieces, I had some pieces already in my bank. I think at this point I would probably change it up somewhat. Um, I know some people still run this, I don't think the crit resist, especially what it's giving you, is 
it's almost not worth it now nowadays. Um, I think your team could benefit from other things more. Um, SPC, uh, Spell Power Cure, would probably be a, a better alternative here just because it's offering the additional healing, that kind of thing. But um, like I said, I think I had pieces in the bank, so I, I went with this. But um, And then with the split bar setup, because it opens up those two additional slots, it's basically that allowed me to put on Wild Hunt and train, uh, excuse me, and trainee. So this is just a nice buff to the health. I'm running a healthy piece. Um, probably another one that I I bought at some point in the past. You could have, if you had two pieces of trainee, you could potentially swap out Wild Hunt and have another piece of trainee, which would give you the uh, additional Magicka. That's another option. I like the mobility. Your you're definitely more defensive running this setup um, than the average damage dealer for sure, but that extra mobility between that and Zoles, it's still nice to have um, when you need to move, when you need to get out of trouble spots. So this was fun. Um, it's Again, healer really isn't my thing, but I wanted to try something different in PvP rather than just doing damage, and I figured, hey, let, let's bring some utility. Because the tanks... Tanking in PvP is just boring. I like tanking in PvE, but PvP tanking is boring. You're either going to build something that's ridiculously over-the-top survivable, um, and most people aren't going to deal with you. They're just going to ignore you after a while. Or you're going to go in thinking you've got a good tank build and a bunch of people are going to attack you with high damage, good CC, like they know what they're doing, you don't. So going into PvP not knowing what you're doing just because you have a tanky build is still a recipe for it just takes them longer to kill you. That's it. You're still going to die. Um, so it, it does require some skill in order to execute it, but... Once you have that skill, then it's just boring because no one is ever going to kill you and eventually the smart PvPers are just going to ignore you and move on to something else. So what's the point? But healing actually brings a nice um, amount of utility to your group. You can you can um, at least heal, hopefully do some damage, and just generally support the team. So this was, was kind of fun. I definitely prefer um, damage in PvP though, no question. I try to step through these a little more quickly here. This was another one, if I recall, it was um, fun build, leftover pieces in the bank. What can I put together? Uh, I believe the general idea behind this was a um, more of a theme theme build, not so much about the damage. It was like a Dwemer. Architect, someone who studied Dwemer technology and built various pieces and parts from it. I don't remember what she's running for. Uh... There we go. Unlocking. Unlocking things. Engine Guardian, so that's. First Dwemer theme. The moon, belt of the trainees, Thrassian rank. Oh, this is a <laughs> this is an oddball build. Okay, so she's a Templar. Engine Guardian, I'm sure, was for the theme. Um, although you know, Engine Guardian's very nice for for resource sustain. Health recovery is generally useless though. New Moon, Belt of the Trainee just for the One Piece, and then Thracian Stranglers for the Mythic. 
So this was definitely a solo, out on your own type setup. Um, because Thrassian is increases your weapon spell damage by 23, reduces max health. So her health, yeah, she's sitting at 23,000 plus for health. So it looks like I accounted for that. Once the health came down, it would still be reasonable. And then 7th Legion. 7th Legion um, used to be a little bit better. It got nerfed, so it's not quite as good as it used to be. It's a nice, just kind of general buff for Templars specifically because they're, it goes off of your um, increasing spell, and weapon and spell resistance, which Templars have, I believe, the cheapest cost. It's like 700 something. 807. Um, so it's pretty cheap to activate it. And then uh, I think this is another one they changed. Combat. While in combat, you can never test these things out outside of a dummy or actual combat. Um, this was another one that I had left over because normally I wouldn't be running 7th Legion on the on the back bar as a bow, but because it lasts for 15 seconds while in combat, it allows you to activate it, switch over to the front bar, and then do most of what you need on the front bar. Giving you 341 extra spell damage. It's not bad. It's it's decent. And then the Thracian, this is clearly just for solo, so he was an explorer, I guess. Always on the lookout for um, Dwemer technology. Got the Meridian skin. Alright, so I got her. Got the Dromothra whole theme going on there. Next. And yeah, Corsella's. Healer, maybe, or damage dealer? She might be a damage. Probably a DD. I think we've covered all the Templars, so I think she's a DD. In which case, she's probably got a bunch of the dungeon achievements, because Magplar, like I said, tends to be the my go-to for the harder DLC dungeon content. I'm going to try to get through this in 20 minutes. We'll see if it's possible. Okay. Wow, we're busted. Pair real quick. Achievements. So, Zon, New Moon, Overwhelming. Okay, so this is running the same setup that I run on my other Magplar. I actually do try, um, in a lot of cases, not to repeat across accounts just because it gives me a chance to try different builds. But for the, for the setups that are kind of optimized, which in the case of Magplar, because I want to be, for me, as optimized as I can be for uh, getting through that harder content. If I find something that works, it's um, not surprising that I'm using it on multiple counts. So, but that's a quick, easy, 
in and out there. So. This is. I'm gonna throw real quick. This is the going to be the very similar setup to the other nightplate tank. Because again, if I find an optimal setup um, for harder content. When I was more active on these accounts, the. The Nightblade tank was my go-to tank for the harder content just because of that survivability factor. But I've said since um, switched over to back back to uh, DK or my primary tank on the main account. So she is running Leeching as well and Imperium. That was the other set I was trying to think of before. So Imperium is, a, is another one of those sets that's great for tanks because it, it gives a nice damage shield to your group. Um, this is definitely one if you're starting out. It's a nice utility set. If you're wearing this. Um, shouldn't get accused of selfish sets because this is definitely contributing to the group in terms of protecting them. Uh, it's a Leeching Imperium and... Alabeth. Okay, nothing new there. I think she's over here because she vamp, but they're only only vamps because of leftover. I literally haven't for the bulk of the content. It doesn't hurt enough. It doesn't impact it enough in a negative fashion that I have to worry about it. But there was a point back in the day where. Um, being a vamp at higher stages was actually useful for tanks. So, literally just a legacy leftover. It gives me another vamp that I can use to bite characters. So. Okay. Amblade. If I recall, this is again nothing all that unusual. It's probably like New Moon and Spriggans or something to that effect. Good old Veldrith. Still decent. New Moon and Spriggans. Okay. Agility on the back bar. Anytime you see agility or willpower on, willpower on my back bar, you know the build's fairly old because I haven't replaced it yet with Maelstrom. She's here, which means. The yep. For those that um, want to level the cheap way, highly suggest every time before you log out, park your character right at the stable. So the first thing you do when you log in, you're staring right at the stable master. Um, if you're off somewhere else, uh, I used to do that way, and 90% of the time I would just completely forget. But if you're right at the stable and you park there before you log out every time, the first thing that you see when you log in, you're like, oh yeah, that's right, I gotta update the um, my speed or capacity or whatever. So it, it still takes a while, especially when you have this many characters. It can take quite a while. I stopped 
caring all that much as far as like having to log in every day to tap it. I just, I happen to be on that character and I log in. It gets upgraded, otherwise it just sits. Speed is about the only thing that really, um, that's the first priority. Capacity because of inventory management issues in this game if you get you start gathering a bunch of stuff capacity is definitely second priority and if it's a pvp character um i highly recommend upgrading that stamina too it's going to help a lot earth gore scathing and spc what a <laughs> what an odd build Uh, like pseudo damage plus healer SPC is going to be good for the group as long as someone else doesn't have major courage um, so this is going to be useful to the group and it's going to buff you as well so solo play SPC is a great set for solo for sure um, as you're healing yourself plus you're it's a decent, it's 430 extra weapon and spell damage. So this is good for solo. Uh, Earth Gore, the same thing. So it looks like I was going for damage with good healing support, both for me and others. I'm not sure why I would need to run an infused SPC staff on the back, but okay. And um, clearly you're a vamp because you're... Noises. Alright, so no worries there. We're into the night blade. Is that the la that's the last night blade. That's the mag blade. Vampire. So 11 minutes, can we do it? Okay, I can already tell from looking at this, this is the... This is the same werewolf, Stamsark werewolf build that I have on the other account. Again, normally I try not to duplicate builds across accounts. That I have variety and I can test different uh, alternatives. But if I recall, this one was so good um, for my playstyle and so effective that uh, I set one up over here so I'd have a similar build on this account that I could play when I was on this account. So, no need to go any further than this. Okay, so it's identical. Looking so angry. Yeah. Another Sork setup. Definitely Stam, running dual wield.
Okay, this is a little bit of an oddball. Got Stormfist for the recovery. Briar Heart. Critical damage, which of course on a Sork, uh, higher crit is reasonable. Weapon crit looks like 21.9, that doesn't look good. Possible something got nerfed. Wow. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with this one, to be honest. Running... Hail Order, Briarheart, Aegis Collar is definitely a fun set. Especially for a Stamsork, it's kind of thematically fitting, but... Um, my crit seems really, really low, so... Sharpened Axe, Nernhoned, Dagger, Maelstrom if you go on the back. I'm not sure what to say about this. I think this would be fun. Um, I don't know why I'm running Hail Order. Arena. Oh, okay. So that was just the arena setup, it looks like. Okay. Um, Stormfist, Aegis Collar, and Briarheart. I don't know why I would be running... Briarheart's bringing crit to the table, but it's... Um... Oh. Okay, maybe she didn't have all the pieces on. 31. That's still not great, though. Definitely recommend having higher crit going to be running, um, unless you have some sort of guaranteed, guaranteed crit setup. Oh, okay, so I wasn't, yeah, it wasn't outfitted correctly. Skills, I've got this on here now, which is bringing me 10% more. Or maybe that's higher than 10% nowadays. But that was part of it. That's still only 31.5. I'd recommend higher crit if you're going to be running something like Briarheart. And even as a Stamsork, the uh, crit surge is based on your crits as well, so generally speaking, you want you want higher crit numbers, so switch to the Thief Mundus, or find a set that brings more crit to the table. Oh wow, yeah, we're not getting through these in five minutes. Yep. This is the problem with alts. Any changes they make that require logging in or It does give you a lot of it's it's better if you're if you're someone that likes to theory craft or do different builds <clears throat> um, I should say before the armory now you don't really need to prior to the armory if you wanted to do try out different types of builds and didn't want to constantly lose your old build alts were kind of the, the alternative to that um, but it did require going in and actually leveling a whole nother character, which obviously I did. <laughs> I wanted the option, but um, this is definitely not the, the... It's time consuming, for sure. So I'm in here, which means probably need to talk to this guy. And this is going to be the same setup as my um, other account, Night Mothers plus Ravaging. So... 
Got a maelstrom over here. So, different approach works well enough. Um, I'm almost positive. I had ravaging on um, multiple accounts because I had used it in earlier years and both of these, this one and the other one, I believe, were an attempt to reinvigorate that set. Arts, I furnace, Frogger can like the other account. Um, it's very, very similar, so that's a quick one. The Rift Master Explorer, alright. Probably never been to the Rift. Tempest Island. Okay, gonna be similar to the other tanky werewolf build. The alt account um, is actually running a Nord, if I recall, and this one is an Imperial. Both are good choices, I think, for that particular setup. The extra stamina and health from the Imperial means more resources for skills. The health um, means your werewolf heal is going to be a little bit stronger. And you do get cost reduction with the Imperial. That's another big... Maybe not big, but it's a significant benefit to go in with Nord as you get overall cost reduction for everything. Additionally, Elden Root has many oh, it's you. Facilities, homes, and Tina. other elements of the community suspended within the Elden Root. Acolyte. Branches. Is that Isn't same? that exciting? Is it easy to yeah. stumble off of these areas? Same setup. Well, I'll leave before they get, uh, before she says branches. I know a lot of people hang out at uh, Elden Root is their main uh, daily kind of spot to do crafting and that kind of stuff. I found it to be, it's cool to look at, but that tree is such a pain to go in and out of the upper levels. I've tried out a few other places. Um, Northern Elsewhere is not bad in terms of locations. Um, Imen, I think it is. Most of the stuff's fairly close together, but it's hard to be raw car when it comes to everything being co-located in a close space. Plus, I don't have to listen to any cats singing badly. Playing a toaster. Alright, this is uh, Nord. Side of it. Deadly. Unleash. 
The wood elf known as Finindrin. Maelstrom's Greatsword, Maelstrom Bow. Uh, Deadly and Unleashed I know is a pretty solid setup. I don't know... The Warden. I'm not sure on Warden. This may have been another kind of throw together type setup. To be honest. Oh, you need upgrades. Hello. Alright, so... That is a good setup. Um, I know I tested that particular setup on... I think Dragon Knight was the first one that I tested that setup on and it worked really well. I want to say it worked really well on Dragon Knight and worked really well on um, Necromancer. Stamina. Because you get the, get the gap closer um, running Stampede and then Carve and various other things that you can, especially DK, because it's damage over time. Although they nerfed, I'd have to look at Deadly, because they nerfed Deadly again, if I recall, in order to make it useful for Magicka builds, but I want to say it's now like 15%. It went, with, it went from 20% for damage over time and channeled abilities, I think is what it used to be, and then it went to 18%. And then they knocked it down to 15% for all abilities, I want to say. It's been altered. <clears throat> Unleashed is surprisingly potent. It's another one of those ones that when you look at the tooltip, it's misleading. Um, Bloodspawn, Kinra's... New moon, maelstrom, moon. Weapon damage. Okay. Ginra's is definitely. That's still. Top tier, as far as I know. Um, I don't think anything's changed with that. It's top tier for both mag and stam. I don't know if it's number one, but it's it's up there. Um, and then this is the DK, so again, I, I've always had sustain issues with DK. The blood spawn's a nice. Gives you that extra recovery, plus gaining the ultimate for DK, which is useful, and the resistance. Both damage and a fun build. What's going on, buddy? Um, MDK is definitely fun. I don't play it as often as I probably should in order to enjoy it, but um, yeah, it's definitely fun. Okay, I think let's just motor through these last ones. This is another DK. I was actually, um, there was a point where I was actually running uh, it's like a Magicka based Dragon Knight as a healer, which was a pretty solid, um, I was surprised actually. They do a pretty good job in terms of healing. Not necessarily directly through their abilities, they do have definitely have abilities to assist in the healing. Just overall, I was surprised DK is not the first class you think about when you you think healer, but it worked worked pretty well and, and brought some nice utility to the uh, the group. You can actually come in if you don't have another DK in the group. Um, 
with a decent Magicka loadout and help with chaining in mobs and stuff as the healer. In addition to just doing your general healing, so it was, it was fun to play. I don't think that's what this is. I'd be wrong. No, this is a damage dealer. So she's running Zon, New Moon, and Burning Spellweed. Okay. Um. Push me out of the way. Another DK, um, I believe he's he was one of the first ones that I switched to using Deadly and Unleashed. I think the part that goes unnoticed with Unleashed is that um, the bleed damage. I forgot how they refer to it, but it's it's almost a subtext in the description, but it it's when I looked at the overall damage output for uh, during testing, that's what was making the key difference in the total damage, because the tooltip that you see looks decent, but it doesn't look anywhere near to what you expect. So Deadly is... increases damage your damage over time and channeled abilities by 15%. Okay, so I'm not sure what I know that it got reduced to 15. I'm not sure what the old one was now that I look at this. Uh, maybe it was included like physical damage and poison damage. I know originally I think it was primarily stamina focused. So Unleashed. Hemorrhaging. That's what it is. So deal direct damage with a blink, charge, etc, etc. Um... They bleed for 10 seconds, dealing 11,000 bleed damage over the duration, which is which is decent. Again, you're doing dot damage. Um, so it'll go for the full 10 seconds. Um, and the, the, the reason that this works so well, the hemorrhaging is the part that, that doesn't have a tooltip, but that would show up as additional damage. Um, and that makes a significant difference. But the beauty of this is when I'm with the um, with the two-hander stampede itself, because it's the maelstrom weapon, is doing additional damage from the stampede, and then stampede itself puts an AOE on the ground. So everybody that gets hit by this charge, or whoever gets hit initially, area around that person, anybody in that area gets affected by the effects of everything that you're dishing out. So the stampede. Um, AOE plus the bleed damage. This also will affect everybody that's in that area. Um, plus the unleashed, the bleed damage and the hemorrhaging status effect will also affect everybody in that area. And then you've got deadly, which is um, further amplifying all of that damage. And as a DK, you have your own form of, um, this is single target, but you've got Carve, which is also putting out bleed damage in an AoE. You have Noxious Breath, which is AoE damage. You have Arrow Barrage, which is AoE damage. You've got, um, this is single target, the dot, so this won't be as affected, but, um, and this as well. This I think DK is what I started with for this setup, which really, really um, shined in terms of the damage output. It was solid. 
Very solid damage. The Khajiit have suffered much. You can tell from the various characters that I've got on between the two different counts. Khajiit is not my first choice. I think I'm I'm down to only one at this point. I wish they were less squishy feeling. But the devs apparently think that they're in a decent spot, so. Necromancer tank. This was another one that I've gone back and forth with. I don't think I've really, even up to this point, found a solid tanking build for Necromancers that I like. I had a few different setups, but... Necros are another one of those ones that are really heavy on Magicka. If you play them, try to utilize um, their full kit for tanking, it requires quite a bit of Magicka. Um, which is what I ran into with the DK as well, and trying to find a balance. The balanced setups always seem short. Um, from a resource standpoint, I feel like I'm always running out. So, Ice Heart, Barajas, and Warrior Poets. Okay, this is an interesting setup. I haven't done anything with this guy for quite some time. So, he's running Barajas. Um, Warrior Poet for a non-warden, someone that doesn't have access to minor toughness, is actually a solid set. It doesn't do anything for the group, but if you're looking to just boost your own health and uh, armor, this is a good set. Um, Iceheart, probably just for the protection and maybe the theme of it, because he's a necro. Baraha's Curse, Ice Staff on the back. Sword and Shield on the front, Dagger and Shield. Interesting setup. I think you do end up, um, I'd have to look through again, I think you do end up with more skills in the Necro Kit that do damage in one form or another. So Baraha's is actually a, it's a, it's an okay choice. Um, but Well, we're going to leave this alone for right now. Just because Necro is my... Further down on the list in terms of tanks that I actually like to run with. I come up with a good setup that actually... Um, feels survivable, good resource management, that kind of thing. I, I'll probably run it more often, but for now... Stick with... Uh, Dragon Knight or Nightblade. Warden. Actually, Warden's good too. I haven't actually run into these characters for quite some time now. And the problem with having 18 characters on an account is literally scrolled off the page. Having 18 kids. You can't possibly keep track of all of them. Alright, what are you running? 
Beldriff, okay. Your Venom and Operator. Oh, okay. This is another leftover Swamp Raider um, on this account. It was something I started with really early on. I believe it was on a Stam DK. Master's Bow. So this is uh, essentially a poison build. Not bad. Beldrith for the poison damage there. Sheer Venom. So she's running dual wield, which makes sense because they um, switched this to where it would affect. Or switched Sheer Venom rather to where it would affect AoE. Um, multiple targets, so running this in the front triggers that. Tell from the skills. The bulk of this stuff is designed for poison, with the exception of this, but that's to trigger sheer venom. Poison, poison. That probably hasn't been morphed, would be my guess. Yeah, hey, that should be toxic barrage. Just if you're going for the poison theme, for more poison damage, but I haven't leveled it enough to do that yet. Okay. Um, yeah, Infused Axe, Iron Dagger. This used to be the ideal setup years ago. So these are clearly leftover pieces. Master's Bow is going to be single target, um, so that's going to increase single target weapon and spell damage, and that's another good reason why Poison Arrow is here. Beldrith for the poison damage, Operator, Necklace Rings. Add 600 and weapon, weapon and spell damage to your poison and disease damage abilities, so we're all about poison and disease. Okay. <clears throat> you see here I'm running Piercing's Bounty. Because this is a Necro, I don't think anything's changed on the Necro, so they didn't gain anything. Stamplar's recently finally got major sorcery, major um, brutality on their main spammable. But this is a good alternative if you're someone that doesn't like the um, dual wield hidden blade, having to actually hit your target first before you actually get the brutality buff. I've never liked this skill. Both both morphs, I, I know that the damage output is decent but both morphs just suck to play in my opinion. Um, I don't want to use it as my spammable. If I'm going to use a spammable from dual wield I'm going to go with bloodthirst or rapid strikes. Um, this for the dot, this for AoE, this just for general protection and more damage AoE. I don't like this as a spammable. It feels really clunky. Always has. Um, and up until this became a passive on Werewolf, the only option was to use this. But with this being passive now uh, on Werewolf, all you have to do is literally level Werewolf. You can see here I only went to level 4. Just enough to unlock this. You don't even have to morph it. Drag it down to your bar. You get Major Brutality and Sorcery by default. It's just active all the time. Um, don't have to do anything. It does take a bar slot, but my opinion versus this, I mean, either one is going to take a bar slot. And this I have to activate. It costs stamina, and it's clunky to use. And you see, in this case, I'm not even running Bloodthirst, so I don't. I want to use something else for my spammable. So this actually is a nice alternative. Um, it is only active on the front bar, but that's where the bulk of your damage output should be. Anyway, this should essentially just buffing and then you switch back to your front bar, so. Okay. So we're going to leave her alone. There's not much to do there. I haven't played this all that much, but you get the general theme of it being poison and disease damage throughout, kind of buff, buff all of that.
Almost there. Last one. Uh, aggressor. Cool. I believe this is my PvP character. It's likely running the same setup as the other account. Oh, look at that. Maxed out. Needed one more. Okay, Zoles, yep. Awesome. New moon. Powerful, it's all powerful. It's wild hunt. This is the same setup. The only thing I would suggest is maybe replacing powerful assault with Daedric Trickery. Um, or some other set that backbars easily. Um, doesn't have to be powerful assault. Daedra Trickery is a good one to choose. Um, there's a new one that came out in the last six months, I want to say. I don't remember exactly. It's similar to Daedra Trickery, but it works in the opposite, and then it, that it offers five. Wow, she is loud. She's so annoying. I'm going to stay here because I want to. Oh, you know what? No, I don't have to worry about leveling up anymore. I'm gonna move. That poor guy should have been freed six years ago. He's still there and she still babbles. Um, replacing this with something else that works well as a back bar set. The alternative, or the kind of the... Uh, it's a debuff set. I don't remember the name of it now, but there's an, a newer set that came out. It's craftable, I believe. Wait, no. Is it craftable? It might be a dungeon set. No, it's Overland. It's Overland, if I recall. Um, I don't remember the name of it, but it basically offers five random debuffs, as, as opposed to buffs that you get from Data Trickery. It's potentially useful for tanking. It might be useful uh, for similar reasons for PvP, so that's something else that you could potentially run here. Um... I guess you could potentially do something like Armor Master, possibly. There, it's it's a smaller percentage of sets that work as back bar sets, but there are sets that work very very well that offer you timed buffs or debuffs, some sort of a benefit that lasts for X number of seconds, that will roll over to the front bar. Um, so any of those that you think would be useful for PvP would be. A good alternative for this. So that's it. Um, rounds out basically both of the accounts. Got all my achievements account wide now, um, and that kind of covers the general builds that I'm using. I do have some duplication between accounts for builds that either I had similar equipment in the bank on both accounts or I came up with something that I really really liked uh, well enough that I decided to replicate it on the other account but I think that about covers it. I'm gonna wrap it here.